afternoon. So um, I wish and hope that you have a great time today and learning different things from different speakers. And uh, just want to say thank you to David and also Randy for giving me a chance to speak over here. So today my topic is going to talk about multilingual website and uh, going to build it with WordPress and how easy it is if you are using the WP app now of doing it. Okay, what's multilingual website? Some of you may be very new to this particular wording. So basically multilingual, it means that um, your website was translated into different languages. So for example, um, when I build a website or e-commerce or WooCommerce for my client, sometimes they will ask a question like this. You know what, Esther, I have a um, client from China, I also have clients in Malaysia, so what can I do, you know, should I have two different websites, one website is in China, one website is in Malaysia, or should I have multiple translation? So for this type of issue, it will depend on their business model. So let's say, for example, if this company, they are running different type of marketing strategy for different country, uh, let's say, i give you an example, for Malaysia, maybe we have this uh, Madeka time, the whole month of um, August, we may be running different type of uh, marketing strategy. Let's say if you buy uh, during this period of time, maybe you're entitled to get 20% discount. So this type of marketing strategy may not work in other countries, for example, China or Thailand. So if you want to run an uh, independent marketing strategy for different country, then running different websites in different country will work that way. But in certain, kind, in certain ways, some of my clients, maybe their content is always the same, whether you read in Chinese or you read in English, is that everything is the same, it's just that they need a different languages to be translated. So if their method is everything is the same, then I will encourage them to uh, create a multilingual website, which is just website, one website, but they are having different languages to be translated. Okay, what are the benefits of doing multilingual website? Okay, so let's say imagine you are selling items in Malaysia. So you have, let's say, 100,000 of customers. So right now you're going to expand the business. You want to expand to maybe either China or maybe Thailand. So when you're expanding the, um, the business into different country, if you're able to translate your language to their own native language, basically you get a new bunch of customers. So instead of getting 100,000 customers, uh, 100,000 sales, you may be getting 200,000. So it will help you increase the sales and your customer base will be expanded as well. So the third part that is good is, which is the saving the cost. Imagine if you're running one website for one country. So you're going to have two batch of people to maintain it on different website for different country. So imagine if you're doing everything in one website, so it will save out a lot of cost and also timing. You just have to translate everything. There are generally there are two ways of doing the translation. So I think when if you are lazy or maybe you not, do not have that much of time doing it very specifically, you can actually use an automatic way, which is Google Language Translator plugin. If you have the time and you want things to be professional, everything will be translated in a very professional method, then you will have to go to the manual way. So there are different plugins in the market, which is WMPML, Polylang, Reblog, and Qtranslate. But due to time, timing constraints, I'm only able to explain one, which is today our target of WPML. Why I'm not using Polylang is because um, Polylang is giving free as well, but if you want to use it for WooCommerce, you have to pay additional 99 USD. If you're using WPML, it covers normal website and also WooCommerce and it's only just USD 79. So it's up to you which one that you want, but I decided to use WPML as well. There's a lot of plugin is supported. So imagine sometimes you want to translate different plugin, it will work as well. So this is one of the main reasons why I love WPML. Okay, how it works. Basically later I will show you a demo how it's going to work. There's few parts that we wanted to, I only can cover a few parts of the translation due to the time, time constraint. So I will guide you how to do it for the page, the post, my new widget. If I have additional time to go for the WooCommerce, I'll guide you how to do for the category and also the product. So for this um, demo, these are the plugins that I installed. So basically I'm using Visual Composer Builder, Revolution Slider, 
The slider is going to be in the home page, the big banner, and then WooCommerce, study blog. Okay, now the fifth to number nine, one, two, three, four, five, this total five plugins, all of them is by WPML. So after you purchase the plugin from WPML, basically you need to download different little little plugins over here. So these are the full range if you want to install it um, for just a normal website plus WooCommerce. If you do not want to use WooCommerce, the number six you can actually scale it off. Sorry, not the end yet. <laughs> so I just want to show you how it works in the real life. Okay, I wish and hope that the internet connection is good so that uh, the loading and everything works well. So I will not go into everything too detailed, but I will guide you through at least you have a um, glance you know, of how this thing is going to work. So basically these are the plugins that I installed that I'm using for this uh, demo. Okay? So this is the home page. So if you look at the top left, left side, okay, these are the language switcher that I actually created previously. I also can have a language switcher in the menu if I want it. And then uh, these are the team I'm using, which is a royal team. If you want, you can go to Team Forest and buy it. The uh, reason I'm using royal team is because it's very flexible in, uh, for me to manage the packet. So these are the, uh, this one is the revolution slider. So this is some text. But I, due to time, I cannot, call, I cannot translate everything, but I will translate the main thing. So let's say this is the home page. If you click on the Chinese, you will be able to view the Chinese version. Okay, if you go into the text, right? Okay, this is the original way, okay? But um, all these texts are simply translated. It doesn't mean anything directly from the English. Um, I just simply put some Chinese that text only, okay? You can imagine these are text, it's just the Laurel is so, okay? So, and the bottom is in the English version, so you can actually do it, all this thing. So, let's say this is a proper way of doing the translation. If you're in the shop page and uh, you want to go back to English, you just have to go click on the English version. Okay, you will see in the English. If you look at it, you will see different information, right? See the English, they have more products, and the Chinese, they have lesser products. That's because I have not translated two different products. So that you will have Chinese one version of the website and the English is another version of the website. It will depend on whether you translate everything into the Chinese. Okay, let's get started with how we are going doing it in the back end. So, okay, this is the first thing you will be seeing if you go to WPML language. Okay. Um, the first thing you need to do is you have to create a language, okay? You can add a language over here. So there are a default list of the language that is already appear here. So let's say I want to have a Malay, so I just add Malay and I click save. So it takes some time. If it's success, you go back to here, you load, you'll see a Malay version. But if you click a Malay version, Okay, I translated it before, so you will see something like that. But if there's no slide, then it will be empty. Okay? So let's go back to English, okay? So over here, you can change your default language. So let's say today I have set English, but maybe one day I decided, oh, I think my market have to focus into China, so I can click Chinese. Or maybe one day my market is in Malay. I can click on Malay, so it's actually depend on you to decide what is the default language that you want to use. Okay. So actually over here there's a lot of settings that you can do, but I will only focus four settings only. So this is the default language and also adding a new language. So one day you realize that I'm going to expand my market to, to a place, maybe Thailand. Okay, I just want to add a new language, you can add over here. Okay, or maybe one day you decide to add a language that is uh, not supported here. Okay, you cannot find a language. Maybe something that is a very weird language, you know, or that is cannot be found here. So what you can do is you click on the edit language, and over here you can decide to add your own language that you want. Maybe over here this is called ABC language. This is a short code that you would like to have, and then. Uh, if you look at it, this is a translation, right? Which means, let's say in Chinese, okay, what is the name of the word, if you have? 
if it's the English version, what is the word of the what is the English version of this particular text? And this is a Malay. You can choose a country. And then uh, this is a default local code. Okay, this is mainly used for your URL. So you can have your all this thing. And then uh, okay, let's go back. This is the first part that I'm going to talk about, which is just how I mentioned, is creating the language that you want to have in your website. So the second part is the URL format. How do you want the URL format to be done? Some of them, they love to have something like this type method, which by maybe cn.abc.com or msabc.com. But for me, I prefer to be something like this, which is abc.com slash cn or slash ms or slash en. That's my preference. So it's entirely up to you how you want to set it up based on your own preference. Okay, this is the second part of it. So now we move to the third part of the setting. So the third part of it, first of all, maybe um, this is a certain setting for the switcher option. The switcher, which is over here, this one. Sorry, this part, this is a switcher. This is also the switcher, okay? So maybe you want to have a certain order. Basically, maybe you think Chinese is the first one which should be up here. Or you think English should appear here first, then Malay, then Chinese. Then you can actually uh, drag and drop the, 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 the sorting of it, how you want it. So this one, when they measure how the language handles without the translation, what it means is over here is that, okay, let's say default language is English, you create a post or page or anything. The Chinese version, you haven't translated yet. So should they redirect back to the home page or you are actually still showing the page but it remains in English? So let's say, imagine you have this short page, okay? But you did not, if you look at here, there's no Malay version, right? So let's say, uh, do you want to show the Malay over here? But when they click, it's remain in this version, but it's in English, but it will not show in, it will not redirect back to the home page. That's what it means. So this second part, the third part, what we will do is, we will create a language switcher in the menu, and we also, the fourth part, we will create the, the language switcher in the widget. So how to do for the menu? And so app I, I I did I think it's easier. Okay. You before this you have to create your own menu first. Okay, these are the list of the menu. So I want to put it into my main menu, okay? So um, do you want to appear the first menu? What it means is like um, before the home page you will see the menu feature or you want to see it uh, after all the menu and back. So this is what you mean, first menu item or last menu. So do you want to be a drop down? or you want to be in a list of uh, languages, something like that. But I prefer to drop down so that it will not eat up all the spacing, especially if I have a long menu. So these are different settings you want to have. Do you want to put a flag? Do you want to show a native language? Let's say in Chinese, right, you will see like Zhongwen over here. Do you want to show all this thing? Or you do not want it, you just untick it off. And then language name, the current language, do you want to show it? So these are the settings that you can put. Current language means, um, some of them, let's say if you are in English version, okay, they do want this English naming to be here. So that's what it means. So these are the color settings. Do you want to set any colors? Imagine some menu, right? Maybe they have a certain background color. My menu will get a little color, so I don't need to set anything. But imagine if your menu got a background color in black color. Then over here, you can actually you can do a certain setting, like you can set a pre preset, okay? So you will see something like that. So it is all preference and also setting, but for me, I prefer no color. Okay, maybe you have to clear the cache, okay? Or maybe you have to save everything again. Okay, now we go for the region. So the region of doing it also exactly the same like how you do it for the menu. So the widget, you can actually choose whatever widget that you have created. So I have a widget called left side top bar, which is over here. So I want to appear here. This is a widget. So I actually choose the widget that I want. And over here, do you want to be horizontal or you want to be a drop down? For me, I choose a horizontal. It's, it's all up to you. But for me to choose horizontal is because I want people uh, 
to see it without clicking anything. So let's say if you create a drop down, if I'm the customer, I have to click on it and see all oh, these are the languages. But if I'm putting it everything in one glass, I look at it, then I can directly click already. So it's more user friendly if I'm using this method. Okay, so these are the color, and if you want, you can put the widget title. But um, to me, it is no need. So mainly, these are the few things you can do the setting. If you have the time, you can play around with others, but um, due to the time constraint, I couldn't show everything to you. So I just want to show the main settings that you need in order for you to get started how, of how to translate it. Okay, so now I already have all the settings. I have created English, Malay, and Chinese version. I mean English, Malay, Chinese language for my website. So now I need to start doing the translation. So the first thing what we, I need to do is I will go to pages first. Okay, so these are all the pages that I have, okay? So let's say imagine I want to translate. Okay, imagine I want to translate this home page to Chinese. Okay? So this is a duplicate format of um, it's a duplicate version of the existing home page. Okay, so if you look at the, this part, which is my right hand side, okay, uh, what you can do is, for me, normally what I'll do is I'll click on it and I'll duplicate the content. So duplicate content means, let's say, whatever you have over here, you duplicate it exactly the same, 100% the same, and then it will be in different version, okay? In different version means the content is the same, but you still have to translate by yourself. But that's the first thing you have to do first. So after you translate, right? After you click the translate, okay. So these are the version. So how do you know this one is an English version or is in the Chinese version? You always can look at the top. When it shows English, which means this is the English version of this particular page. Let's say I want to edit the Chinese version, then I click on the Chinese. So this is the Chinese version. So you, how do you know? You can double check on, you, you, can, you, can, you can look at the link over here, there's a CN, okay? And, uh, okay. the first thing is revolution slider. So I will put this on hold for a while, which I will come back later, and I will guide you how to translate revolution slider. So this is one reason why I love to use WPMS, because uh, there's a lot of plugin that will support it, and you can actually translate directly when you're using the plugin. If you are using certain, oh sorry, sorry, okay, um, okay. Before you translate to any slider, okay. I mean, before you translate any slider, go to the slider setting first. First of all, you need to enable. Uh, okay, you need to enable the setting. So you have to go to the general setting miscellaneous and make sure that you turn it on else you will not able to translate anything in the revolution slider for the slide after you turn it on then you have to go to the editor itself okay over here can you see this choose the language so this is this has a border model right so right now this is the english version so if you want to translate chinese you have to click on it so this is the chinese version of it Anyway, it's okay. If you click on this Chinese version, what you, oh sorry, you just have to click on the edit slide. Then you will see the Chinese version that I have created previously. So you can click on it, you double click on it, then you can type your own um, wording that you would like to have. Okay, these are all the wording. So that's, if done, then just make sure that you save it. So if you want to go back to the English version, what do you do? You just click here. Then you click at this slide. Then you go back to the English version. Okay, this is the English version. So let's say if I want to do the Malay, what I do is I click here and I add a new language which is Malay. So now you will have three different versions. So you can translate here directly. 
Um, if you find me, this is very difficult. Sometimes I do a shortcut way. What I do is, I just create this thing called maybe um, Chinese slide. Then when I go to here, I instead of choosing English slide, I just choose Chinese slide. This is for those who actually want um, a shortcut method. You can actually do it in this way. So this is how you translate a slider in the home page or any page you want to have, which actually only taking you a couple of minutes to get finish everything. So right now, over to the page that we have right now. So the first part of it is done, the slider. So now is the second part. Let's say we want to um, change the title. Okay. Let's say this thing. Okay. So always be sure that you are in Chinese. So that you do screw up your English version. Okay, this is a duplicate version. Okay, instead of showing you a new one, let me show you something that I have already done. Okay. You know, um, the page that I'm showing me right now. So this is English. If I click on the Chinese. First of all, I can make sure that the name of the title of the page can be changed. And then, um, this is slider. The slider, I don't have to choose a Chinese version or whatever. I just remain the same slider and I just translate it from the revolution slides. So let's say this is the title. Okay, this is what I have changed previously so that um, you don't take out my time to copy and paste all the translation. So. Um, this is title, this is a description, you know, these are all the things which is what you see over here. Our benefit, why choose us? So what you do is, if you go to Chinese, you will see Chinese. Okay, so this is the page. So now we go for the post. Actually, post is very similar, yeah. so oh, I will not. Okay, many done already. Oh, sorry. Okay. Many widget okay. done already, so now the post that I will go for the WooCommerce. So maybe I come back to post later if I have the time, but I go for the product and the WooCommerce directly. Then I can save up time. So let's see in products. First thing before you have to create the product or in the Chinese version, what you do is you make sure that the category already translated to Chinese version. So let's say when you're in the English version, okay, this is the different type of the uh, category you have. So what you do is you edit on it, and at the bottom, you actually can click add. When you click add, you will come back to here, you will copy the Chinese wording, and uh, after that at the below, at the bottom, you make sure that, imagine that this is Chinese, and this translated for this particular category name. So this is category. So now go for the products. Okay, there's two products I have over here. One is already translated into the Chinese. Another one is before. So the one that before you translated, what you see is the same thing. So you click on it and you just click the button duplicate. Then you click on duplicate button. After you duplicate, okay, let's say I'm doing it for Chinese. Okay, this is the version of the Chinese. So when you look at it, then you can actually do a translation. So let's say I go back to the original version that I've already translated. So this is English version. If I want to look at the Chinese version, I just click on Chinese. Okay. So this will be in the Chinese version. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I don't have time. <laughs> if I had to do that, I don't think I have enough time. So um, basically, doing this one right in 
if you go to the short page, okay, you will see this is a translation. So let's say I click on this product. Okay, sorry. Oops. Sorry. So before I translate, I'm sorry. Just want to show you this is a category name that I, I translated for the category for Chinese version. So let's say I go for the product. So this is a product. So you look at it, the description is in Chinese. Okay, and uh, let's say, if you see this thing, right, is in Chinese, right? Basically, origin is called description. So this is a few item. Few is like, you can think about it, it's, it's a string. So WPML allow you to do all the translation, including the string. So I will do one example for this one, product description. I'm going to translate this text into Chinese or Malay. So I go back to the back end. Sorry. I go back to the back end and um, I go to WPML and I look for the string translation. Okay. So over here you have a lot of different type of string from plugins or the original WordPress website or your lawyer or the team or plugin. Yeah. So let's say I paste over here. This is a text I would like to do a translate and I click search. Then I will see different things, okay? These are the things that is appear. So what I want to do is I'll do a translation for royalty. Sorry, David, where is the, where is the text? In order for me, for me to cut off the time, so I have actually do some translation over here. Okay. Over here, I just click on it and I paste it. So let's say I only do for Chinese, and then I make sure that translation is, co is completed. If I did not take this one right, over here you will not see it in Chinese. So let's say I take it and I click save. Then you become a Chinese version. So if you go to, because this page is not translated into Malay, that's why you will not see the Malay um, country. So you want to see it either English, you go to English, or where is it in an English version. If you go to Chinese, it will be in Chinese text. Okay? Any wording that you see over here, including the add a card, or this successfully um, added to card, you can copy, and then go to the string, and then over here the same thing and then you search again and then you click on the translation make sure that you take this as soon as you did not take this you will not see any changes or any languages that is translated so if you click add to cut you will see the text over here so basically if you come back to the book to the WML ML, right? It's basically either you translate from pages or posts or you want to do a static block. Everything will be on your let's say we go for the post. If you want to translate it sorry. Okay. Let's say this is the post that you would like to translate. <coughs> You will always at the right hand side. Just make sure you click on it. Then you will see a duplicate button. Sometimes you didn't see it, sometimes because the internet connection is a bit slow, it will take a bit time to load this particular button. So you just click on it. Ta da! You already have a Malay word, English version or Chinese version or Malay version. So, how you make sure that you are always in the right version? Always make sure that you on top, you click on the Chinese. Okay, this will be Chinese version. So for me, what I do is, I will always type Chinese wording or let's say if this is a Malay version, I will type a Malay naming of it. So when I go to post, when I look at it, let's say for this one, it's already translated, then I know this is already translated. So if I remain putting it in English name naming, when I look at it, I have no idea whether this is already translated or not yet translated. So when I look at this one, I know that okay, this is done. 
So okay, let's say we go back to this one and have a look what I have done previously. Okay, you look at the this is the naming. Okay, this is you already translated. You look at the URL. It will always have a CN. Okay, this is a Chinese version. For the Malay, they will have a slash ms. So over here, you can actually do your own Chinese uh, or whatever translation you would like to have it. I think uh, most probably is done. Other thing you see like such a static flow is actually plus or minus the same. Is everything is always on the right hand side. You do the translation. Always go back to here. You prefer Chinese and English. After you're done, you just make sure that um, just make sure that you click on the Chinese to see whether it works or not. If it works, which means your translation is done. So whether you want to add to cart or you go to the view cart page or whatever check out, it's all controlled by the string string translation. So generally, for me, I love to using this one is because I can control how details I would like to have it. And uh, I believe that this can help me to do all, all of it. And uh, to me, the pricing is not that high compared to some of um, other plugins that is in the market, which I have checked it out. Some of them, they are costing maybe more than 100 USD. So uh, basically, I think everything is done. And um, No, the end. Okay, alright, great, great. Okay, great, alright. I think Esther did a great job. Okay, you want to sit down first? Oh, thank you very much.